Okay, hello. So this is a little bit of a recap from the IDO Stories of Making presentation I did on the 27th of April 2012 on why I think cardboard is fantastic. Uh, so first of all, just a little bit of background. Uh, I'm a product design engineer and uh, really the cardboard modeling and indeed other types of modeling are really a means to end to working with all sorts of people from around the world. So, for example, I've worked uh, with the NHS in Glasgow, I've worked with the California firefighting team. Uh, in Hong Kong, I've worked in an old people's home specialising in osteoarthritis sufferers, and even a startup company in Norway producing the first Norwegian whiskey. So, really for me, it sort of started out as a kid uh, with one of my best and very hyperactive friends uh, making a cardboard T-Rex. And this was a sort of awesome competition when you're 10 because you just got to spend the whole day getting really excited and really into the modeling. Um, and then later on, even when I was about uh, maybe 13 or 14, I ended up really getting into music as you do in your teenage years and uh, making a, a collection for my mini discs that I had, which I think is still now in my kitchen. So, but really one of the, the great things I sort of really loved as a kid was uh, a program called Bitsa and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but basically it's a very, very hyperactive version of Blue Peter, and in many ways the projects were a lot crazier and a lot more spontaneous, and uh, I really loved that sort of speed, but never really expected that you could actually get a job doing these sorts of things. Uh, so indeed, it was a rather long and convoluted story for another day, but fortunately I did manage to end up working at Dyson, as I do now, uh, as a product designer, and um, basically we work with all sorts of great people there and it's a very diverse mix of uh, people we work with uh, and although I'm unfortunate I can't share with you some of the projects that I have been working on uh, this is a nice little demonstration of what's now the DC08 and the really important things to take from this are the fact that with these six pictures say surrounding it is that a significant proportion is really laid down in the design in the cardboard modeling and sketching and, and these sorts of refinement stages of the product uh, before we move on to more expensive prototyping such as SLS or SLA. And uh, I think what's really exciting about this is that, to be honest, you, you really develop a, a deep amount of appreciation for the form, the function and the usability of the product. Um, but as I said, I can't actually go into too much detail of what I'm doing now, so instead I decided to demonstrate the, the carbon modelling skills of my Dyson Christmas party outfit, which, as you see, all good things start with a good solid sketches of drawings and working out all your dimensions and how things are going to go together. And here I have some examples of the, the, the sort of building up of the structure and really beginning to use the cardboard as a, as a structural element and a theme throughout it. And again, the whole thing was covered in an industrial yellow foam and indeed employing skills from when I did textiles. So there's quite a bit of stitching and pinning involved in getting this done. And one of the things I was really pleased with was the fact that I managed to put a mesh so that I could see out of it and the eyes that could move were held on with little uh, high power magnets so I could move them from side to side with my teeth and kind of stalk people and freak them out as the night wore on and people got progressively drunk as they do at Christmas parties and so too is the sort of squiffy eyes which I really love about this by the end of the night um, but for me really the, the cardboard fascination seems to go even further in that even when I end up going to work in London for Dyson doing demonstrations, I couldn't help walk past Selfridges and see this really amazing display uh, just made entirely from cardboard and what I really got into was the fact that the person uh, had really got into the detail of, of the, the, the structure of the corrugations of the card and really used this to sort of great aesthetic effect and indeed I almost sort of felt that it was really sculptural which reminded me of uh, very much one of my other passions which is architecture and here I thought I'd show an example of for some of Frank Gehry's real early stage work uh, and you can see that even though cardboard is used there's obviously plastic and foils as well but it bears nonetheless bears a striking resemblance to what ends up being the final product and I think this really illustrates how powerful it can be. Um, and again when I was just doing sort of form and, and function sort of studies when I was in Norway 
uh, I was making this sort of rather sculptural uh, bowl, if you like, out of offcuts of cardboard from a, a paper house project of all things. So for me, it, it's really about using the, the, the cardboard and the material, or any material for that matter, in, in a really sort of unconventional way and seeing how far you can push the limits. So even going back to the mini disc rack, uh, you can see that there's little little grid shaped patterns and they are actually because it's pinned together with matchsticks which you'll find fit really snugly in between the corrugations of the cardboard so it's a nice little technique that I use quite a lot um, so going back to the the whole bits of program this was really great as a kid but I kinda really longed for something that was like of a more professional nature and indeed tried googling all sorts of things to try and find this but didn't really get anywhere close um, so the closest thing I could see that kind of had this level of, of, of demonstration and, and sort of a deep understanding of something was uh, a little blog called Sketch A Day and I've been in touch with the guy Spencer and uh, really explained to him how much I love the fact that he's got really quite a full length video of uh, how he goes into building the sketch up and really rendering it to quite a high level um, although it's still meant to be kept as an industrial de designer's blog in that it's meant to be quick and it's kind of unashamedly you know, functional in that it conveys the message of the sketch for whatever purpose he's working on. So I like that honesty and indeed I wanted to achieve that with any sort of instructional demonstration of cardboard modelling. So needless to say I sort of rushed back home and tried to figure out a way that I could give a, a video demonstration of what it is that I'm doing. So it kind of ends up being a bit weird that <laughs> I've got a tripod suspended from my ceiling and uh, my missus makeup mirror pinned onto the back of the camera so that I can actually see what my hands are doing if I elevate them to the camera to show a particular feature. Um, and again, if I go into a few stills of it, you can see that I, I walk people through the process of uh, intricately scoring the back of the card here and that gives it a really nice curved profile and allows you to glue it all together um, really effectively. So the way I want to break down what it is uh, that I'm doing is into a selection of tips which would be very quick videos of just showing things like how to join cardboard, how to create curves, uh, how to make moving or sliding features within it but then also progress on to fuller projects for example like the, the DC-08 made out of cardboard uh, really to see how people can bring those skills together and indeed that, that they're quite interchangeable and you can vary them to suit the needs of the expression of the model. And again, above all, it's meant to be a quick process for demonstrating your ideas in design or indeed for anyone else in, in a different discipline that finds this really useful. So I kind of mocked up a bit of an example, kindly using Spencer's background, but it just illustrates where I sort of want this to go. And uh, so I'd really love any feedback on the videos that I hope you're about to watch and enjoy as to how I can make it a little bit more sophisticated and indeed what bits you like and what bits you don't. So thanks very much for your time and uh, I hope you enjoy them. Bye bye.